Hello friends, welcome to Edusphere. In this video series, we shall briefly discuss about the different dating techniques used in the field of archaeology. We know that the study of history gives us access to hundreds of years of recorded time. But it is only archaeology that opens up the almost incredible vistas of thousands and even a few millions of years of past human existence. The sequence of development of culture or the relationship between different events can be well established only when events can be placed in proper time. So the first step in much archaeological research involves ordering things into sequences. Therefore chronology is the central theme of an archaeologist. I guess you know what chronology is. It is simply a science of measuring time and ordering of things in time. In other words, it is the arrangement of events in the order of their occurrence in time. We know that prehistory denotes a period for which we do not have any written records. It deals with a long span of time. Therefore, whenever any kind of prehistoric remain is recovered, a very common question that comes into mind is how old is it, whether it belongs to Paleolithic period or it belongs to a comparatively recent Chalcolithic period. To get the answers, we have to rely on various dating methods that are available to the prehistorians. Ok, so let us discuss how the different dating methods are categorized. All the dating methods today can be grouped into one of the following two categories. Relative and Absolute Dating. Absolute Dating is also known as Chronometric Dating. The first method that scientists use to determine the age of rocks or artifacts is Relative Dating. In this method, scientists compare different layers of rocks to determine an order sequence of events in geologic history. That means, they don't really know how old their rocks actually are. The key in relative dating is to find an ordered sequence. Scientists simply piece together a story of how one event came before or after another. Relative dating cannot tell us the actual age of a rock. It can only tell us whether one rock is older or younger than the other. On the other hand, the absolute dating technique determines the actual age of rocks through the study of radioactive decay. That is how many years ago the object was actually formed. It offers precise and accurate dating. In the early stage of uh, prehistoric studies, only this relative dating chronology methods were commonly used. Later on, with the emergence of new methods, there has been a total change in dating scenario. A list of some of the absolute and relative methods are shown here. We shall discuss each of these methods in detail as we move ahead. Now let us start with some of the commonly used relative dating methods. First comes stratigraphy. The most common form of relative dating is stratigraphic succession. This is nothing but a fancy term for the way rock layers are built up and changed by geological processes. Scientists know that layers they see in sedimentary rocks were built up in a certain order from bottom to top. When they find a section of rock that has a lot of different strata, they can assume that bottommost layer is the oldest and the topmost layer is the youngest. Again, this doesn't tell them exactly how old the layers are, but it does give them an idea of order sequence of events that occurred over the history of that geological formation. For instance, you can say that you are younger than your mother and this would be a relative age. No special numerical value is given to your or your mother's age. Sort of an offshoot of stratigraphic succession is fossil succession or a method in which scientists compare different fossils in different rock strata to determine the relative ages of each of these fossils. So this method of stratigraphic succession is primarily based on two principles. The principle of superimposition and the principle of original horizontality. Now the principle of original horizontality just means what it sounds like that all rock layers were originally horizontal. Of course, it only applies to sedimentary rocks. You can recall that sedimentary rocks are composed of sediments which are deposited and compacted in one place over a period of time. As you can imagine, regular sediments like sand, silt and clay tend to accumulate over a wide horizontal area and with a general consistent thickness. Once we assume that all rock layers were originally horizontal, we can make another assumption that the oldest rock layers are furthest towards the bottom and the youngest rock layers are closest to the top. This rule is called the law of superimposition. Again, it's pretty obvious if you think about it. Say you have a layer of mud accumulating at the bottom of a lake. Then the lake dries up and a forest grows over it. 
more sediment accumulates from the leaflet matter or the waste of forests until you have a second layer. The forest layer is younger than the mud layer and the mud layer is older than the forest layer. When scientists look at sedimentary rock strata, they essentially see a timeline stretching backwards through history. The highest layer tells them what happened more recently and the lowest layer tells them what happened longer ago. As you can see in this figure, applying the principle of superimposition, we know that stratum A was deposited after stratum B, stratum B was deposited after stratum C and so on. Without additional information, however, we cannot assign specific dates or date ranges to the different episodes of deposition. The second picture also represents how the abundant prehistoric villages are superimposed with soil and vegetation where another city dwells. Therefore, whenever a stratigraphic sequence is observed during the excavation of a site, relative ages of the cultural levels can be worked out. The stratigraphic associations of artifact types within and between archaeological sites are regarded one of the very important methods of relative dating. Next method is typology. In this relative dating method, the tools found in the site are arranged on the basis of their form or shape and accordingly different categories are made. Classification is commonly done on the basis of the following three characteristics. Surface attributes like uh, decoration and the color. Shape attributes like the dimension as well as the shape itself. And the third one is technological attributes. What is the type of raw material used? These are then arranged from simple to elaborate or from poorly preserved to well preserved or from crude to refined etc. Then a relative antiquity is derived based on the presumption that simple poorly preserved and crude tools are earlier than the elaborate, well-preserved and refined ones. A collection of artifact types at a particular site are termed as assemblages and group of assemblages have been taken to define archaeological cultures. As you can see in this figure, the types, assemblages and cultures are all artificial constructs designed by the scientists to put order into disordered evidence. Here you can see how the sub-assemblies uh, patterns and assemblage patterns are grouped and these help in classifying the societal behavior at a particular point of time. So this may not be a reliable method, it has come in for much criticism nowadays since the classification is quite subjective. So that was the end of this video. We have discussed about the broad classification of dating methods and uh, specifically about stratigraphy and typology dating methods. I hope you found this video informative. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks for watching it.